Hi there, I'm Rebecca Larson and I'm your Students Lit Comp 9 teacher. Um, I know this year has been crazy in so many different ways. Um, and if you, like me, are a little overwhelmed with school starting and so many emails from teachers and information from teachers, I suggest you just um, bookmark this and that way when you have questions later, you can go back and read it or watch it or click on whatever you want to. Um, but you don't need to do all of this today. So give yourself a breather. This is just a resource for you to go back to. Um, and know that I, as a teacher, will be communicating with you. Um, I will be sending out a newsletter periodically telling you about due dates that are coming up, things that students are doing, helpful um, kind of videos, whether it's navigating Canvas or something um, regarding maybe parenting that's interesting or an article about teenagers. I'll be sharing those with you periodically through our, your Parent View email. So this is a little bit about me, um, and I shared this picture with my students. I am a mom, and I have three kids. I have a fifth grader, a second grader, and a three-year-old, um, and it's busy, and this year it has been really hard, but I am so thankful to be back at Sunset. I've taught here for eight years. I've been a teacher for 15 years, um, and it is a fantastic place to work. So I'm so excited to have your student in my course and to kind of see what they're going to do this year. Um, just to get to know your student a bit more from your perspective, I do have a Google form that's also in the email that I sent you. It just asks like, hey, who's your student? What do you want for them this year? And anything that I um, would be helpful for me to know as I kind of work with them. So if you could fill that out, I'd be super appreciative. All right, so let's get started for today. So my priorities for your child are yes, that they learn, but my priorities really are for your student as a whole person. I want them to be mentally, physically, emotionally well. Like that is high, high priority um, during this time. Um, a lot of families are just going through so much in so many different ways, and I don't need to know everything um, to know that you are in a new normal just like we all are. So I did give you the Oregon Crisis Line and the website. If you need anything, please reach out to me. We have so many resources at the school um, that we can help you out with, whether it's food, whether it's shelter, um, whether it's internet access, whatever you need, please let me know so that we make sure that your student um, is taken care for as a whole person and you are as well. Our learning goals, which are really secondary after those things, are to read, to write, to communicate. We as adults know how important, especially now that everything is kind of digital and we're doing so much writing, um, how important it is that students be able to read really well, that students are able to write and students be able to communicate. There are some people, um, more like me, who is of course as an English teacher, like an early reader, or my oldest daughter who is a reader and love school and all of that stuff. That's great. But then we have other people like my husband or like my second daughter who really struggle with reading, who where writing is a struggle, even physically writing is a struggle. Um, those are okay too. So this class is hopefully gonna be for both of those students, students who love it and students who dread it. Um, we'll make it accessible and make sure that we, um, they have the skills that they need walking out. All right, our weekly schedule. So again, I've printed out about five schedules for my kids, and I still am not sure what they're doing on this day. Um, but our schedule, I'm trying to make it easy, accessible, kind to students, and make sure that they still get the skills that they need. So this is tentative. I, of course, have never taught in a pandemic all online before um, using all of these tools that we have. So this is what I am thinking. These are best practices. Um, I have taught hybrid online. I teach at PCC as well. So I have these tools kind of under control, but at the same time, we also switched from year-long classes to semester classes at the high school, so I'm not exactly sure how much we're going to be getting through. So we are going to have to be flexible um, as much as possible. But every week, I hope the students can get into a rhythm. So on Mondays and Thursdays, we have live Zooms, which they are expected to be um, kind of in front of their camera, um, interacting with their peers, doing some kind of work, collaborating. Um, that's going to be all together. They always have an assignment on those two days as well. And the assignment is gonna be small. It's something that typically takes them about 10, 15 minutes. It's just a check-in for me. It is not for a grade. It's something that says, this is what I learned, so I as a teacher can take that and figure out what they need to do next. Um, so we call that formative. So that's Monday and Thursday. 
Tuesday and Friday, they are asynchronous, which means they work at their own pace. For many students, especially freshmen, I would highly encourage you to have them work on their class exactly at that same time that we have their normal Zoom. It'll kind of keep in a, in a rhythm or a habit. Um, on that day, instead of seeing a live Zoom with me, they're gonna have a video similar to this. It's, I'm gonna take them through instruction. They'll see my face on the side. They'll also have access to me via email um, and via Canvas, so I am online. So yesterday, um, there were some kids with questions and I was answering emails back and getting that. So they will have that. Um, they will have a discussion in Canvas, and that discussion is really kind of like um, their table groups where they would talk to each other. We're just doing it online. And then they will also have a very short assignment just to kind of see, check in, what did you learn? How are you doing? That type of thing. So that is Tuesday and Friday. Wednesdays are a little bit different because uh, Wednesdays are no teacher contact days. Your student will connect with their advisory class, which is like a homeroom class. And all they will be doing is independent reading. We'll talk about where they will get those books. Independent writing, we'll be doing a lot of writing in class and I'll be asking them either to produce writing or to work on their writing. And then I have a grammar unit that I use, have used for years that students will um, watch and do kind of a grammar worksheet because as we're doing a lot of writing, I wanna make sure that their grammar is really strong in that. So you can see um, my office hours, you can see how long, you can see that it's about four and a half hours a week. For some students, it might be five and a half. For others, it might be like three and a half. Again, depending on how fast your student kind of works through things. Um, and we'll kind of adapt as we go. All right, daily expectations I kind of already walked through. Monday, Thursday, live Zoom assignment. Every single day, we will have a Google Form attendance. Um, except for Wednesdays. So Wednesdays, again, just their advisory will take attendance. Um, but every other day, they're gonna have to check in their four classes every day for attendance. And I know it's frustrating and maybe annoying to the kids, but um, attendance is really important for us as a school. It is how we get our funding on how many students are there. So please make sure to remind your students um, to check in for attendance. I'm not going to be doing late penalties. Every single assignment is going to say due at 11.59 p.m. That's just like a, a go-to due date that it's due that day, the end of the day. First of all, I don't suggest that students start at 11.30 doing the assignment. They can, of course, submit earlier than that. Um, and if they don't get to it in that day, it's okay. It's completely okay. Like I said, life is crazy. My oldest daughter, my fifth grader, oftentimes has to watch my three-year-old for me as my husband and I are working. And maybe your students have other things in their life that they need to do. That's okay if they need to help take care of someone in the house or if they're out of the house for a reason, I get that. So if they don't get assignment in it every single day, it's okay. Um, they can. I'm asking that they can try to do it by Saturday night. And honestly, if they don't get to every single assignment, it will be okay. It's not gonna hurt their grade in any way, shape, or form. We want them to try to do everything, but we also don't wanna stress them out um, that if they miss something, something's gonna happen. It's not, it'll be okay, and we'll all kind of get through this together. Um, as I said, attendance is super important. They will have a Google form on my homepage. There's an attendance button. Um, Wednesdays will just be an advisory. I just wanted to kind of reiterate those guidelines. Of course, we're gonna be Zooming. <laughs> Please let me know if you need um, help with your Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi has been incredibly difficult, even in our household that I feel like we had really good Wi-Fi. When we get four people Zooming, it gets a little bit crazy. Um, and sometimes like my daughter's computer just like shut down. Um, the Chromebook sometimes don't love the Zooming, plus like all of these other tabs open. So if you do have another device, it and your Chromebook is not working, um, you can always use that. They have, of course, like fancy stands for um, all of your phones and stuff now, but I just use a shoe. Um, I did yoga for years. I do yoga for years before they were all closed. And this was kind of a yoga instructor hack was when you wanna record yourself or you wanna watch something, just stick your phone in your shoe. So it's a great way that if your kid's Zoom is not working on the Chromebook, if they have a second device, you can always use it that way. Um, you can see I have in headphones with the Zoom and with listening, it is helpful to have headphones, especially like my entire family is downstairs and sometimes the background ground noise can um, get a little crazy. So headphones if possible, if not, that's okay. And if you, again, you need headphones, please let me know. Also by the end of the day, sometimes your ears kind of hurt from headphones. Um, so I get it if kids need to take those out. All right, Canvas. Uh, Canvas is the end all be all. It is our classroom. 
Um, I have made for you this Canvas video for our class that you can watch at a later time or never, or when you need something, go back and watch it. Um, when you click on that, it will take you through what to do. It'll take you through what each click is and what information is. Um, I know this is overwhelming to you as parents. It is overwhelming to me as a parent when I get information like this, but I also want to um, make sure that you know where things are. So if this is a very great short video, this Canvas Parent 101, that would be super quick that you could watch. Um, and my hint for students is that you can watch videos on double time on YouTube, which is one of the reasons why we use YouTube. Um, that's not a bad thing, I do that too. So if students are watching something double time, it's okay. Um, there's a lot of information here too. So if you're looking for something specific, you can go to that playlist and it'll look for something. And if you're not sure how to get to Canvas, I've linked the parent portal here, um, which will bring you out to Beaverton School District and it is connected to your parent view. So those two things. Um, I know that, that it is a lot to ask of parents what's going on right now. And so in my parent video here that I show you guys, um, I talk about the calendar. There's an agenda spot on the calendar and it'll give you every day what your student was supposed to do that day. And so I'm just gonna show it to you real quick here. So if you go to the calendar, it's gonna come up with the month, but the month view is a little bit overwhelming. So, so here, see this is kind of the month of what's going on. I suggest going to the agenda. I don't have anything because I'm not a student, but you will see everything your student had to do that day. So if you have time or you're able to, um, I highly suggest just talking to your student at the end of the day, maybe at dinner and being like, hey, let's pull up your agenda and like see what's there. Do you need any to do anything today? Okay. Also in this class, of course, we are giving grades. The spring was very different um, and grades are scary. They're scary for parents, they're scary for teachers, they're scary for students, especially these ninth grade grades because this is what counts, right? This is what's on the transcript. I get that. Um, I don't want grades to be scary. Um, I want your kid to learn, right? That's my top priority. And then at some point I will assess them. So Beaverton has two types of assessments. One is called formative and that's what's in this blue here. That's what we're doing every day. It's a check-in. I want to see, I give lots of feedback. I want to see what the student's learning. Then once most of the students have learned what I feel like they should, then I will do an assessment. And typically in Lint Comp, it's going to be some sort of project or some sort of writing or some sort of presentation because that's what we do. We don't really, I don't think well, they'll have a test all year. So it'll be some sort of project type thing most likely and that will be graded and that will be say summative and i try to tell students that all the time this is summative this really counts um, so once i have those summative grades and your kid will probably only have like 10 summative grades for the whole semester and that will be a capture of their learning once i have those 10 summative grades in canvas i will put them into synergy when I update for those progress report times and other times, and that's what you will see in parent view, which is called synergy. And that's what will formulate into a grade with a BSD scale. If you have more questions on this, please feel free to email me. And as I said, as we get closer to progress reports and grades, I'll be giving you more information as needed. So what are we gonna do this year? Well, we're gonna do some units. <laughs> One, we're gonna do choice reading, which I'm gonna talk about in just a minute. Um, we're gonna start with narratives, we always do. It's great to get to know students. It's great to hear their stories. We'll also be reading and watching a bunch of short stories, reading graphic uh, novel uh, excerpt of March and kind of seeing what's going on um, in the world there. So first we're doing a narrative unit. I love it, it's my favorite, I've taught it for years. And then we're gonna kind of dip our toe in some research and information and reading a bunch of nonfiction articles and how to set up an article and thinking about audience and how to do research. We'll have Miss Casanelli, our library in, our librarian in, and she'll talk to us. Um, then we're gonna move into a book study and that might be their choice reading book. It might be something else. That's a little, we'll see how timing goes this year. And then we'll end the, the whole year with some poetry um, for students. So choice reading is really a foundation of our class. And you can see here, there's a ton of online resources. Sunset Library is going to be available to have students pick up books from our library, which I am so excited about. Um, and so I will give you more details on that. If you are the type of person who buys books for your students, or perhaps you don't, but you, grandma does who lives you know, in Michigan, um, I encourage students to make an Amazon wish list and share it with you. 
um, to use things like Audible, which is audiobooks, which absolutely count for reading in my class. Um, there's a ton of resources out there. I'm walking through your students with that um, today, so they have this as well. And my number one thing when parents say, my kid's not reading or my kid's reading all this type of book is if you want your kid to read, start modeling it. Read with your kid. Sit down and instead of going to your phone, open a book and start reading. We often complain that students don't do things, but we don't do them ourselves. Um, I also encourage you, if a kid's reading a book, get two of those books and read it with them so that you can talk about it and be like, oh my gosh, what did you think of that? Um, so these are just some things to get students reading. We know reading is super important. We know um, that it increases vocabulary. Um, it of course shows students themselves in the world and it also opens windows to places that they could never um, imagine. And so my goal is for your student to be reading 20 minutes a day. I want everyone to be in the 90th percentile over here. They'll be reading 10 minutes in class with me and then I'm gonna be asking them to read 10 minutes out of class, which is about 20 minutes there. Um, I also linked my log if you're curious to what I read. Um, I try to read a bunch of different things and it's been really hard for me reading during quarantine. Know that about your kids too. Their brains have changed and so even readers are struggling to read and that's okay. So again, taking a step back, I know it's getting long, I'm sorry. Um, normally I do this at back to school night, but I don't think we're going to be having that today. My goals for your family and for your student are to have happy, healthy students. I want them to learn how to express the best version of themselves. Lit and Comp um, in the middle school is called Humanities because Lit and Comp has the unique position to talk about and dive into the human experience. What makes us as individuals really interesting and unique, and also what makes us as humans connected in so many ways that you wouldn't have thought of. So I'm hoping for a great year. As always, please contact me if you need anything. Um, I have a doc link with questions also in the email that you can throw your questions in. And what I'll do with that doc is I will answer all of them. And then after about a week or so, I'll send it back out to you as parents so that you have all the answers there. And again, you can just bookmark that um, so that you can reach it another time. Thank you so much for um, entrusting your students with me during this year. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit harder, but I'm really excited to see what everyone's going to do this year.